Hello, it's me again. It's your hostess, Back to the Basics. This is season two, episode 31, Kentucky Tragedy Aftermath. I'm going to be breaking down an article talking about David McAtee. Um, it's been a while. Um, hmm. Telling you, I don't know what's going on over there in Louisville, Kentucky, but it's just a whole bunch of mess going on. First of all, grand risings to everyone who will be watching and listening, watching the playback. Thank you for being here. Let me move over to this article. Take some of this stuff down off of here. There we go. There's the article. Okay, this article is taken from WDRB, which is a local news source in uh, in Louisville. Covers uh, Louisville news as well as the state of Kentucky and Indiana. So this is an article, news article written by Jason Riley. Article is dated September twenty first, twenty twenty. Title of the article is David McAtee's family files wrongful death lawsuit against Louisville police, Kentucky National Guard. Before I get started, I am going to run this this banner because none of my statements are endorsed by the United States Army, Department of Defense, and or any other military branch element government entity. Once again, none of my statements are endorsed by the United States Army, Department of Defense, and or any other military branch element or government entity. It's important that the military stays apolitical. Let me get back to this article. The link will be put placed in the description box. So David McAtee, also known as Yaya. The family of David McAtee, a popular West End business owner who died after he was struck by a bullet by a bullet fire by the there we go. Kentucky National Guard during protest over Breonna Taylor's death, filed a wrongful death lawsuit Monday against several guard members and Louisville police officers. So this article was dated the 21st. Okay, so the 21st was the Monday, and so was the 14th. Okay. The lawsuit filed in Jefferson Circuit Court on behalf of McAtee's mother, Odessa Riley, accuses law enforcement of making a series of escalating mistakes, including firing pepper balls at fleeing citizens, turning off body cameras, and using deadly force without justification or warning. So my, in my note, my little quote box, I put a cover up or nah. This is gonna, we are going to see. It claims the 53-year-old barbecue chef committed no crime 
or before he was killed on June 1st. Also, we, we remember during that time frame, George Floyd had just happened maybe a week ago on Memorial Day. McAtee was inside his home and business, Yaya's Barbecue at 26th and Broadway, calmly grilling a little after midnight as people milled about outside of Dino's Food Mart across the street, the suit says. At the time, there had been four nights of protests over Taylor's march killing by Louisville police. But people were not protesting, vandalizing, or looting when police and guard members swarmed the area in unmarked vans and armored vehicles and began yelling for people to leave, according to the suit. Within just a few minutes, McAtee was dead, and his niece, Marshall, who is also a plaintiff in the lawsuit, had been shot with pepper balls while standing just inside the kitchen of the business, which the suit noted has long been a place of refuge for locals and police officers looking for a good barbecue sandwich. Unaware of what was causing the chaos and who was shooting at his customers and his niece, David McAtee stepped out of the kitchen door to try and defend his restaurant, home, family, and customers, the lawsuit claims. I just put in this bubble self-defense. And, oh, I, I will go on a short rant and make a comment. For some of the Black women who have the nerve to say that Black men don't protect us, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Moving on. Immediately, the police shot and killed him. Less than 30 seconds after David McAtee was cooking a sandwich, he lay dying on his kitchen floor. Police have said they were dispersing a crowd at Dino's Food Mart in violation of the then citywide curfew when McAtee fired a gun from the doorway of his business and officers returned fire. Now, remember, that's what the police have said. An analysis of the bullet fragments recovered from McAtee's body showed they were fired from a guard member, but investigators have not been able to identify which rifle they came from. Interesting. He died from a single gunshot wound to the chest. I have an issue with that. <laughs> You mean to tell me no medic was out there to in or any 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 first responder to treat a gunshot wound? And even if a medic was not out there, you're telling me that nobody no guard member had a chest seal? Nobody had anything first aid related on them. Hmm. I don't believe that. Let me keep going. Two shell casings from a nine millimeter pistol were found near the doorway of the business. One inside and one outside, according to J. Michael Brown, Governor Andy Bashir's executive cabinet secretary. The state crime lab determined that those shell casings were fired from a gun that we have confidence is the weapon that David McAtee had in his possession the night of the shooting, Brown said at a press conference in June. Notice what it, notice that statement. We have confidence is the weapon. So those casings either came from Mr. McAtee's gun or they did not. It's not, well, we we're confident that it's it, it either is or it isn't. 
Kentucky State Police, the U.S. Attorney's Office, and the FBI are investigating the shooting. Of course you are. You guys always say that. Everything's under investigation. Brown has said investigators believe Louisville police fired nine rounds. The National Guard fired as many as 10 rounds. Now, notice the statement. Brown has said investigators believe Louisville police fired nine rounds. The National Guard fi fired as many as 10 rounds. Listen, if y'all don't even know how many rounds were fired, uh, were fired that night, then that right there tells me that there's some shenanigans going on over there, over there, because you're telling me that you don't even know how many rounds were fired. And mind you, I've been to plenty of ranges. There is a definite count on rounds. I've qualified on more than one type of firearm. And that's all I'm going to say. And you mean to tell me you guys don't even know an accurate count? Well, we believe that they fired nine rounds. They either fired nine rounds or, or not. Well, the guard fired as many as 10. Well, they fired 10 or not. Let me keep going. Police have released surveillance video of the shooting. They say shows that McAtee fired a gun before officers returned fire. Based on the information I have at this time, it appears to me that they were returning fire, which is part of the engagement and what any law enforcement officer would do, Brown said in June. But the lawsuit filed by attorneys Steve hmm. Romines, Ted Schaus, and Michael Goodwin claims police initiated the incident shooting pepper balls at people in front of Yaya's, forcing them to run inside the restaurant's kitchen door. Police continued firing into the restaurant, hitting McAtee's niece multiple times, according to the suit. And I put in the bu in this bubble, it's not a cut and dry situation. Who incited the violence? Security video shows Michelle reacted to the sudden impact and external video shows puffs of smoke from the fired pepper balls. So again, it's interesting. See, they said, well, we have video of him firing firing at the officers. Okay, but, but there's also video of his niece reacting to the pepper balls that, that the police fired at, at not just her, but various people. So... The video definitely picked up her reacting and then people started to, you know, go into the business. So somebody's lying. And I don't believe that it's uh, the lawsuit claim. At this point, still no individual had used any force toward any law enforcement officer and the police use of weapons was completely unnecessary and gratuitous and in violation of law and police policies and procedures, according to the suit. <clears throat> McAtee, the suit claims, was unaware of who was shooting and why and looked outside at the same time, time police fired projectiles that exploded in smoke around the door. McAtee was wearing a gun holstered 
on his right hip. The lawsuit claims police had in the past told him he needed to carry a weapon to protect himself and his business. So the same police told this man to carry a weapon, told Mr. McAtee, carry a weapon to protect yourself and your business. When McAtee again looked out the door, he raised his arm in the air and those responding immediately unleashed a hail of at least 18 bullets, striking him in the chest. According to the suit, he stumbled back into the kitchen and fell. So again, he just looked, he raised his arm in the air and immediately was met with at least 18 bullets. Mind you, at least 18, right? But if you, now let's go back. 18, right? Let me see where I can find that. Now see that? There we go, right here. Brown has said investigators believe Louisville police fired nine rounds. The National Guard fire, fired as many as 10 rounds. So nine plus 10 is 19. Interesting. But here we see eight, at least 18 bullets. So which one is it? Was it 18 bullets or 19 bullets? So here again, some people can't even get can't even get and I'm going to even say it they can't even get their narrative together Romines has said McAtee was firing warning shots in the air so here we go I put escalation of force so he fought warning shot McAtee and his niece had committed no crime or disobeyed any commands from laws for from law enforcement, the suit says. They were not in violation of the newly imposed curfew, according to the suit suit. They had not threatened any officer and posed no immediate threat to any officer. The only police named in the suit, here we go, are LMPD, Louisville. Metro Police Department officers Katie Cruz and Alan Austin, who both fired shots that night. Here, here we go. Here's the catch 22. 20 unidentified Louisville police officers and National Guard members are included as defendants in the suit, which claims the city has refused to name them. I'm going to read that again. 20 unidentified Louisville police officers and National Guard members are included as defendants in the suit, which claims the city has refused to name them. Mayor Greg Fisher fired Chief Steve Conrad when he learned that Cruz and Austin had no body camera footage of the McAtee shooting. Oh, yeah. The plot thickens. No body camera. So we can't just go by what the police said. The lawsuit claims every single officer at the scene failed to turn on his or her body camera. Hmm. Also, before the shooting, Cruz had publicly stated her desire to inflict harm on protesters in a social media post, according to the lawsuit. Cruz posted a photo on social media of a protester putting flowers up to her chest and wrote, she was saying and doing a lot more than offering flowers to me. 
just so for it to be known for anyone that knows me and knows that my facial expression tells everything. P.S. I hope the pepper balls that she got lit up with a little later on hurt. Come back and get you some more old girl. I'll be on the line again tonight. The Facebook post is included in the lawsuit, which said that tragically, Crew's aggression and desire to inflict harm on others was taken out on David McAtee and his niece. Not to mention the other people who were out there. Cruz was placed on administrative reassignment while under investigation. You see this? Wasn't even fired. Administrative reassignment. The lawsuit claims it is the first time since 1975 that National Guard troops were called in to patrol Louisville streets and that police were out of control in the days preceding the McAtee shooting. See, that right there is the smoking gun. I'm going to read the next sentence. In response to protests over the, over the fatal police shootings of Taylor and George Floyd, Louisville Metro Police had escalated tensions by using tear gas, pepper balls, flashbang grenades, and rubber bullets against citizens, the suit says. You see, now let me go back to the previous sentence. I'm going to read this one more time. The lawsuit claims it is the first time since 1975 that National Guard troops were called in to patrol Louisville streets and that police were out of control in the days preceding the McAtee shooting. That's pretty bad when the National Guard has to be called in. It's not good. But here, but, but it gets worse, y'all. It gets worse. Bear with me. Louisville Metro Police Department officers and guard members failed to follow proper procedures in dispersing a crowd, including giving people a reasonable amount of time to leave and a warning that a chemical agent will be used. Interesting. So no warning, huh? Hmm. That sounds like Breonna Taylor case. And pepper balls are supposed to be fired at the ground, not at people, according to the suit. Let me go back to this, my commentary. Who was out of control? The police, the national, the Kentucky National Guard, or both? After McAtee was killed, police left his body on the ground at the scene for more than 12 hours, which is not typical procedure, the suit says. Lord have mercy, help me, Jesus. Okay, let me get myself together. Pardon me, I had a few moments. Let me get myself together. This is dehumanizing. No human being should be treated in this manner, regardless of their skin tone or their skin complexion, their background, their age, whatever. I'm going to read that sentence one more time. After... Mr. McAtee was killed. Police left his body on the ground at the scene for more than 12 hours, which is not typical procedure, the suit says. The conduct from law enforcement was so outrageous as to shock the conscious, 
according to the suit, which is seeking unspecified monetary damages and a jury trial. I just like to say this, that, that is the end of the article. I just like to say my heart goes out to the family of Mr. McAtee, his mother, his immediate family, his extended family, his friends, that whole, the whole community. This is a man who took steps to protect his business. Well, first of all, to protect his niece, his family, his business, his home. And this is what happened. And I know what some people are going to say, well, you know, there's more to the story. Of course there is. But when it comes to bullets and rounds, there should be, you can't have at least 18 bullets and then nine and 10 bullets it, like what is it? Was it nineteen bullets that, that that were told? What that were filed? That were fired? Or was it eighteen? It does matter. It, it, oh well, that that's a small discrepancy. That's the whole point. When gathering evidence, one should be looking for the facts. When it comes to firing ammunition, when I go to the range and whenever I'm given X amount of magazines, it is very specific as to what, how many rounds I fired. If I have a magazine that has 10 rounds, another magaz magazine has 10 rounds and I have, and that third magazine has 20, guess what? That's 40 rounds. If I shoot three times, guess what? That means that I fired 120 rounds. Bam. Too easy. There is no, well, you know, um, you know, you, you fired about a hundred and, you know, uh, one, uh, maybe 135, maybe 138. No, 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 no. At least one, 137. No, there is no at least or as many as. I fired 140 rounds. One magazine with 20, two magazines of 10, that's 40 rounds. Okay, I fired three times. I, okay, that means I emptied out that same amount three times. So, four, so 40 times three, oh, 120 rounds. <laughs> I pray that the family gets... what it desires, what the family desires. I hope that you get everything, that you get everything that you desire. Cause this is dehumanizing. Just to add insult to injury, leaving somebody's body out there for more than 12 hours. It's a shame. It's a shame. That is the end of the article. Again, none of my statements are endorsed by the United States Army, Department of Defense, and any other military branch element or government entity. This is no disrespect to our sister, Brianna Taylor, by any means. But, um, and this is not a, uh, let me put something back up here. I realized that I did misspell his name earlier 
and I did not mean to do that. There we go. I'm going to put something back up here. There we go. Okay. okay. Make sure we get the spelling right on Mr. Uh, McAtee's name. I felt really bad after George Floyd and then to hear about Mr. David McAtee less than a week after Mr. George Floyd. It, it just, it was compounding. It was painful. It hurt a lot. Um, you know, something is going on up there at Louisville. I'm glad that I am approximately three hours away. This is no disrespect to, you know, Louisville. I got lots of love for Louisville. Um, had a chance to check out a Nigerian restaurant up there. Uh, was it? It was um, Food Me's Cafe. Um, really good food. That 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 Zobo and that Fufu was popping. Just saying, um, yeah, that that yam based Fufu and kale and beef and the Zobo was awesome. I've never tasted a fresh fruit drink like that before in my life. <laughs> but anyway, um, but something is definitely going on with that Louisville Police Department. And as far as the Kentucky National Guard. There's much I'd like to say, but hey, it's, it's all, what I will say is this, we have SOPs and army regulations for a reason and those regulations should be fired, uh, excuse me, followed, not fired. I misspoke on that last quote. Those regulations should be followed. No corners should be cut. We should follow rules of engagement. Follow rules of engagement, follow pro, uh, proper protocols. Because as you can see through this article, and I'm not going to go back through and read it, but uh, policies and and rules of engagement was not followed properly. And this is what happens when this is what sometimes can happen when we deviate from standard operating procedures and, and, and policies. This is what happens when we don't follow policy, the instructions. Once again, I'm your hostess. Back to the basics. I do want to thank everybody here for just watching and listening. I did go on a few rants, um, but, you know, so much has been, so much has been happening. Uh, we've lost a lot of people um, in the black community over centuries. Um, this is again, no disrespect to Brianna Taylor's family. This is not, this is not, this is not to add to this perceived gender war. This is not about keeping a scorecard of how many black women and how many black men are being killed. This is not what this is about. But I see a lot of emphasis on, you know, Breonna Taylor, and I haven't heard much about Mr. David McAtee, and it just didn't sit well within my spirit that it just appears to be that his case is not publicized or emphasized as much. Again, this is not a competition. But both cases are important. These were both good people. I, I don't care what 
Candace Owens is talking about. I don't care what other people are talking about. I didn't know neither one of them personally, but from what I've been researching and studying, they were decent human beings. They weren't perfect, but they were decent black people. I love you as a sister. I pray that the most high be with you to lead, guide and protect your footsteps. But once again, I'll say it one more time. None of my statements are endorsed by the United States Army, Department of Defense and or any other military branch, element or government entity. The link will be in the description box. And as always, I encourage you to think for yourself. And with that, I'm gone.